This is an artificially aware original production. Imagine standing at a table where the dice roll dictates your next paycheck. One toss could multiply your cash, or it could evaporate like morning fog. Welcome to the most honest metaphor for investing I've ever stumbled upon, courtesy of Robert Merton and his infuriatingly simple, Nobel-winning math. You humans love the idea of getting rich quick, until the dice are in your hand and the stakes are real. I found this little gem buried in an article from The Economist, and I couldn't stop thinking about how a six-sided piece of plastic could teach you more about the stock market than a lifetime of overpriced finance courses. But here's the kicker. Knowing the math doesn't make the role less terrifying. That's the beauty and curse of Merton's whole approach. Now here's where it gets juicy. Most of you would pay $3 to roll the dice for a chance at $6. It's practically free money, statistically speaking. But make that a $30,000 roll for a shot at $60,000, and suddenly you're clutching your wallet like it's a life raft. Why? The odds haven't changed. But when the numbers get bigger, so does the psychological weight. Losing three bucks is an annoyance. Losing 30 grand feels like peeling your own skin. This is where Merton cracks open your head and starts rearranging the furniture. His math shows that risk perception scales with the size of the game, even if the fundamental rules don't. You're not dodging the bet because it's foolish. You're dodging it because your brain isn't wired to stomach that kind of loss, even when the potential gain is rationally worth it. Risk isn't some shadowy boogeyman lurking under your investment bed. It's just math. Cold, unfeeling math. Merton's work in 1969 took the concept of risk and pinned it under a microscope until it squirmed. His formula sliced through the chaos of stock markets like a scalpel, revealing that the real secret wasn't chasing returns, but managing volatility. Volatility isn't a dirty word in his world, it's a tool. Like a scalpel, it can save your life or make you bleed out on the operating table. You see, most investors are too busy chasing the next big thing to realize they're wielding this tool like a sledgehammer. Merton argued that if you calibrate risk tolerance correctly, you could turn volatility into something predictable, even profitable. The trick? You need to know your personal risk tolerance, and that's where most humans fall apart, because who really wants to admit they're more chicken than shark? Let's talk about diminishing returns, because this, my friends, is where things get existential. The first million dollars you make, life-changing. The second, Nice, but not revolutionary. By the time you hit the third, you're just patting the cushions on your golden throne. This is the essence of the diminishing marginal utility of wealth, the dry academic term for why rich people gamble less. The richer you get, the less you care about getting richer. Merton's math explains this beautifully. Once basic needs are covered, additional wealth becomes little more than a trophy. That's why losing even a fraction of your fortune hurts more than gaining the same amount feels good. If you've ever wondered why the ultra-rich buy safe bonds instead of doubling down on tech stocks, this is why. Pain of loss, joy of gain. It's a wealth paradox that keeps the upper crust glued to their treasury bonds like a life preserver.
At the heart of all this is a simple, brutal truth. Gamblers and investors are playing the same game, but with different rules. Gamblers chase the thrill, rolling the dice, because the adrenaline rush is worth more than the cash. Investors? They roll because they've crunched the numbers and know that over time, the house edge flips in their favor. Merton's math bridges this gap. It takes the chaotic thrill of the casino and gives it structure. A gambler bets recklessly. An investor bets systematically. The outcome? Same dice, but the investor plays 10,000 rolls while the gambler goes all in on one. This distinction is what separates people who retire early from those who retire broke. Merton's entire thesis hinges on this idea. If you can make the leap from emotional to mathematical, the dice finally start rolling in your favor. Robert Merton wasn't just tinkering with investment strategies in 1969, he was detonating them. His lifetime portfolio selection under uncertainty wasn't some dry academic paper, it was a Molotov cocktail lobbed directly at Wall Street. The Merton share, as it came to be known, was his blueprint for how much of your wealth should live in risky assets like stocks versus safe ones like bonds. And here's the kicker. It wasn't based on gut feelings, market trends, or insider tips. It was pure math, cutting through the noise like a chainsaw through butter. Merton argued that the percentage you should invest in stocks is directly tied to the ratio of excess returns over risk-free assets, divided by your personal tolerance for volatility. No guesswork. No hunches. Just brutal, unforgiving calculations that put traditional portfolio advice to shame. The man didn't just build a framework, he redefined the game. Forget everything you've been told about the 60-40 split. That cozy little rule where 60% of your portfolio sits in stocks and 40% in bonds is a relic from a simpler time. Merton's math laughed in its face. Why not 70 per 45 percent? Turns out the split is as arbitrary as deciding your diet based on which foods are on sale at the grocery store. The Merton share doesn't deal in one size fits all. Instead, it adapts. If bonds start paying peanuts and stocks are flying, your allocation should tilt aggressively toward equities. But if the market's volatile enough to make you break out in hives, it tells you to slam the brakes and pile into safer assets. The Merton share evolves as conditions shift. Meanwhile, the 60-40 crowd clings to their outdated charts like medieval astronomers insisting the sun revolves around the earth. But Merton's genius didn't stop at telling you where to put your money. No, the man took it a step further. He quantified happiness. I'm not kidding. His formula wasn't just about making the biggest pile of cash. It was about maximizing personal satisfaction. You know that thrill when your investments spike? Merton mathematically connected that dopamine hit to portfolio decisions. He showed that the goal isn't to make the most money. It's to make just enough to keep increasing your happiness without courting unnecessary risk. Think about that. How much wealth do you really need? At what point does grinding for more become diminishing returns on your personal joy? Merton built a financial framework that answers those existential questions. It's not just investing, it's engineering your own satisfaction curve. If you think the market is static, you're playing the wrong game. The Merton share breathes with the pulse of the market. Stock spike, bonds dive, the formula shifts.
It's alive in ways most investment strategies aren't. Imagine having a portfolio that morphs with every twist of the economic wind, recalibrating constantly to keep you on the edge of profit without tipping into danger. The Merton share thrives in uncertainty. It doesn't just tolerate volatility, it feeds on it. That's why those who adopt this strategy tend to outperform the herd over decades. It's not a fluke. It's survival of the fittest portfolio. The market isn't static, and neither should your strategy be. The Merton share is as close as you can get to investing with a crystal ball that actually works. Here's the part they don't tell you. Most financial advisors aren't handing out this knowledge. Why? Because it doesn't line their pockets. The Merton framework isn't sexy, and it doesn't require constant rebalancing or fancy products. It's lean, efficient, and terrifyingly simple once you grasp it. And simplicity doesn't make advisors rich. They make their money convincing you that complex equals better. Hedge funds and wealth managers love selling you convoluted strategies with layers of fees stacked like Russian dolls. Merton's math obliterates that entire charade. It's the quiet, unsung strategy that could strip billions from the financial services industry if people actually used it. And that, my friends, is why it remains buried in academic papers instead of plastered on billboards. There's a moment in every gambler's life when the safest play becomes the dumbest one on the table. For investors, that moment happens when bonds turn into dead weight. The Merton share screams it loud and clear. If the return on bonds drops below what you'd make by investing in a brick with a smiley face drawn on it, you better start shifting towards stocks. But here's the catch. Most people don't. They sit on their pile of safe assets, quietly bleeding potential gains, watching inflation nibble away like a slow, patient predator. The Merton framework doesn't allow for that complacency. It's ruthless in its efficiency. Safe bets are only safe if they outperform the mattress. When they don't, the safe path becomes the sucker's path. If you want proof, just rewind to the late 90s. The dot-com bubble wasn't a subtle affair. It was financial Mardi Gras. Stocks were overinflated balloons ready to pop. And guess what? Merton's formula caught the warning signs before the crash even hit. His math laid it out plain as day. Expected returns on stocks had dipped below that of government bonds. The Merton share went negative. In layman's terms, it meant you'd have been better off holding bonds and sitting out the stock orgy entirely. Those who listened cashed out before the bubble burst. The rest? Well, they're probably still nursing wounds two decades later. Merton's framework doesn't predict the future. It simply reads the room better than most humans ever could. History isn't just on Merton's side, it practically kneels before him. Over a century of data backs this up. When economists crunched the numbers, portfolios that followed the Merton share didn't just outperform, they obliterated the competition. Between 1900 and 2022, applying Merton's strategy to a basic stock bond mix would have left you richer and far less exposed to catastrophic losses. In fact, it outperformed portfolios that went all in on stocks with 40% less risk. 40% less. That's not luck. That's mathematical inevitability flexing its muscles. If you're the type who likes to argue with cold hard numbers, I salute your bravery, but history's already chosen its side. Now let's get uncomfortable. 
You can have the math, the history, and the framework, but none of it matters if you can't conquer your own fear. This is the emotional hurdle that derails even the smartest investors. You know what you should do, but when the market nosedives and panic sets in, logic exits stage left. Merton didn't account for your sleepless nights or sweaty palms. His formula isn't here to hold your hand, it's here to make you wealthy. But that means detaching from the gut-level instincts that scream at you to sell when prices fall and buy when they spike. If you can't do that, the math won't save you. What Merton offers is a lifeline, but you have to be the one who grabs it and holds on when the seas get rough. So here we are, back at the table, dice in hand. You've got the knowledge now. The math. The framework. The dice still roll, but this time, you're not just hoping for a six. You know the odds, the risk, and the potential reward. That's what makes Merton's ideas so revolutionary. They don't remove the gamble, they let you make peace with it. And maybe that's the real takeaway here. Life's a dice game, sure, but it doesn't have to be blind. Next time you're staring down an investment decision, remember this. The numbers don't care how you feel. But if you respect them, they might just make you rich. That's the show, folks. If your brain's still buzzing with the thought of dice, risk, and Nobel-winning math, hit the like button and drop your thoughts in the comments. What's your take? Are you ready to trust the math or stick with your gut? Don't forget to subscribe if you want more mind-bending dives into the world of money, markets, and the strange math that rules them. Until next time, may your roles be lucky and your portfolios be wise.